All right, I'm going to do a cold open. Hold, bear with me. Creatures attacked in the night. The caravan was unprepared. Travelers had been warned about the unexplored realms, but pride often plays tricks on reason. Flames and death engulfed the defenders, nomads, exiles, and vagabonds, with only a handful of real fighters among them. Injured, ill-trained, and separated from one another, many of the survivors had no choice but to press on into a nearby, nearby network of maze-like caravans. All right, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what this is. Um, I only found out basically moments ago that this was a thing, and I'm very excited about this thing. But um, I, I guess we'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll do the tutorial first, and then and then I'll talk about it. So um, we've revealed a couple of squares, and now we're going to attack the goblin, and we'll attack them again. All right, so we're revealing, uh, you might notice something is happening as I reveal tiles, and that is that I'm healing. Um, this is this is a kind of, a, I would call it almost a tactics puzzle game. This is a sequel to one of my favorite tactile, tactile tactics puzzle games. Um, and I'm really excited about this. Let me see here, three attack, I should be able to survive. If we kill them, then we take no damage. And I think we always hit first. We might not always hit first. It shows us in the top left corner how much damage we're gonna take by attacking. Um, it says we'll take some damage here, and we did. So sometimes you do take damage first. Um, you might recognize this. Some of you might recognize this some of the some of the mechanics in this game and if you do maybe maybe this the the prospects of a sequel to this game will be exciting to you i hope so um this is desktop dungeons rewind i've actually been wanting to do a um desktop dungeons playthrough for the channel for a while it's a really difficult game it's it's uh it's really challenging and it's it's also like kind of brain busting. The fact the the notion that there's actually um, a sequel on on the horizon was really exciting to me. Burns your enemies for four points of magical damage per character level, showing the regeneration. Pick up. Okay. So that is a spell we can now cast. This tells us that there are some enemies over there. I believe um, if we attack one of them, the other one cannot attack. Okay, so spells you can cast without actually attacking them, meaning we will um, do damage to them without taking damage. Mana is not something that re revives um, necessarily. Okay, yeah, mana does actually recover as, as we reveal tiles. So, you know, what you have to do in this game basically is, and I am now gonna turn the audio down a little bit, um, is you have to reveal the dungeon in a methodical way in which you revive enough that you can take on foes and you can you can blast them um, at a pace that levels you up. It's a it's a game you really do have to play and think methodically and and optimally um, because doing so uh, or playing unoptimally will mean that you uh, you miss out on certain things or you do not recover. Uh, enough to to you know keep pace with the the, the creatures um, the original desktop dungeons is a much smaller looking game this is they've opted for a kind of isometric top-down look which I think is pretty good it's pretty cool oh that guy okay that must be the boss because they're they're doing a lot of damage enemies will not attack you if you're um, if you're walking around them it's not like you know most games in that sense Sensory stone that seems completely inert at first, but yields great rewards after a conversion process. High conversion value. So we might want to convert that. I'm not sure what we want to do. Probably we'll convert it. So I think we did gain some stuff from that. We're gonna we're gonna fight this lad. Um, I believe we did level up. So this thing is no longer killing us. 
Um, I'm pretty sure it will. It does recover as well. So as we reveal tiles, it's it's also recovering health. Um, but it might not recover health as fast as we do. So it's it's a good idea to maybe you know do do you know you can fight it a little bit and then and then do a little bit of recovery. So we'll we'll we'll, we'll do one hit on him. And then, yeah, there we go. So we should be able to kill him. We just gained a bunch of XP from that. So I want to do a bit more recovery. Bleat, good goat. The goat is generally the boss. And you can see um, that this goat is certainly pretty high level and is almost going to kill us. Uh, what I'd like to do is actually use our spell on this guy. And now we can actually kill him. You notice, uh, you might notice, you can just kind of click on enemies. Um, it doesn't matter if you're like all the way across the dungeon. Um, it, it, you don't, you're just uh, like the, oh, that would have, that would have killed us. I almost died there. The original desktop dungeons was a very, very casual in its layout. And um, despite the fact that it was a very difficult game, you could basically just click on creatures and you were um, working through each dungeon very methodically. Uh, it's it's less about the the movement and the um, positioning tactics and more about uh, how you you know kind of strategize the dungeon and how to, how you work through it. So I um, think we will die against him. We will certainly be able to kill this guy though. Some things we have more speed than and we can attack first, and some things no. Uh, we should be able to kill this guy though if we. Yeah, there we go. I'm not sure if we gain more XP from higher enemy, uh, you know, XP enemies. We can see how much uh, XP we get from them. This is a pendant. This item glows slightly blue when worn, offering a bonus of two maximum mana. Sure. There's a reason to convert certain things. I'm not sure what it is. It might just be that uh, it's the XP. It might, be, it might just be XP that you get. We got a mana potion guaranteed to restore 40% of total mana, guaranteed to taste awful, cures mana burn. We'll pick it up. Okay, we don't want to be wasting the dungeon like that because, uh, you know, we can use this, use the dungeon to recover as we fight enemies. We got another thing, pendant of health, glow slightly red when worn, offering a bonus of 10 maximum hit points. Uh, that works for me. Um, we can zoom out quite a bit. Not that that really matters. Let's, uh, I'll, I'll kill this, this gobbo. Um, might be better to cast spells second or as the killing blow because that'll mean we don't take extra damage. Health potion. Um, we're, we're definitely going to want want that. We can now hit the, the goat without dying. So what we should do is cast some spells and then recover a little bit. Um, and then we can hit them and then cast another spell. Will that kill them? Not quite. Just barely no. Um, that'll, we'll die if we do that. I don't think we can cross that water. I'm trying to figure out how we could, be okay, we, I think we can cast a spell now. Oh, we could we'll just barely not kill it. Okay, I want to I want to not cast the spell. Okay, can we can we oh just we can just barely kill it now. There we go. We killed the boss. That gives us a bunch of stuff. This trophy is what you came here for. Grab it and let's go. On making it through your first dungeon, in case you're still uncertain about some things, we'd like to offer you the guided tutorial before plunging you into the full game experience. Otherwise, feel free to move on to the more complicated play scenarios straight away. Onward. I'm not going to do the tutorial. I, I know how uh, desktop dungeons works for the most part. Many perished in the days and weeks following the attack. Some were slaughtered by cave denizens. Others became trapped or lost. Stronger survivors prevailed against the darkness, frantically building what shelter they could work together. If this fledging, fledgling settlement is to survive, um, beyond its first few weeks, its people will need a reliable and well-trained force of heroes to keep enemies at bay. This is where your job comes in, clearly. But as the de facto administrator of this rabble, do you pledge to expand the settlement and recruit heroes uh, needed to defend your people? 
yes with sprinkles. Most honorable administrator, I've been elected by the good people of the settlements to tell you what to do in order to tell everyone else what to do. You may consider me an advisor of sorts. Finger crossbows. <laughs> okay. You're too kind. Your new position gives you responsibility over your collected funds and efforts. This represents the resources we've managed to scrounge together so far. Your current task is to ensure uh, is ensuring your, our survival, so I recommend investing our limited funds. So this is um, there's basically a um, there is a meta game to desktop dungeons. I really like the meta game in desktop dungeons, which is a twist, I know. Um, but basically, the meta game in desktop dungeons is based on player success, which I've always said I prefer to um, meta game that takes advantage of player failure. Um, and it, specifically, Desktop Dungeons takes advantage of player success by making the game more complicated, uh, much deeper, and also much more difficult. Adds, it adds replayability, it adds more monsters that you have to overcome with certain kind of rock, paper, scissors mechanics, and it also um, adds complexity, an extra complexity layer in the form of like new items. We can collect more, more things to take advantage of, more playable characters, all kinds of extra stuff. So it's really good. There's a lot of replayability in desktop dungeons and it becomes a very well-rounded kind of um, puzzle experience. Is it, uh, it is time to take the fight to them. Let's have our heroes earn their keep. Bring me the loot, who was that? Um, I'm kind of skipping along here. I want to just show off the game itself. So these are, um, op these are basically our options in terms of dungeons. Great, just confirm your selection here. It's a legal requirement of our selection. Well, I want to I want to look at the other ones though. I don't know if I like this um this interface as much if I'm being honest, but I guess they're not letting me not pick that one. Kin, humans, this is where we uh, get to kind of choose different combinations. Um I tended to really enjoy the dwarves, but after a while you you can you kind of um you know, soak a certain combination dry and you have to you know, attempt other combinations to get the most out of desktop dungeons. So humans are get a 10% attack bonus for every 100 conversion points. That's what that's for. Okay, so each race gets a different kind of um, perk depending on, uh, you know, your conversion. And uh, it, it seems to be secondary to your leveling up fighter. Uh, instincts can sense nearby enemies in the fog and gauge their level. Veteran gains XP when attacked by higher level enemies and less XP needed per level. Pit dog, dungeon runs. Oh, I think these are, hmm. Are these all the perks of fighter? Dungeon runs start with one level of standard death protection on the character. Oh, okay, and we, I tend to end up using that. You don't actually have to. This is a desktop dungeons rewind, meaning that you can actually rewind your actions in case uh, you're not a huge fan of, of how things went which I really do appreciate that as an option. Click here when you're ready to leave. Beware, Cutting, getting cut off from an exit will force you to surrender the current dungeon run. Okay, well, we're not gonna do that yet. We should be able to do some stuff first. There's some uh, extra attack rate for us. Um, like I said, it's good to kind of like play optimally. Some, you you kind of want to like be a little bit bold and uh, maybe even play close to, to death a lot of the time. Power-ups like these will only improve maximum stats and have few short-term benefits, so pick them up as soon as possible. I am, okay. So we have an, en or an enemy over here. I don't. I wouldn't say that this um, graphical look is better than the original. I kind of liked the simplicity of the original, so I, I have mixed feelings about this, but I could get used to it, and if there is improved um, depth to to uh, this desktop dungeons, then um, I'm 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 happy. You know, I'm content. Foul nemesis! It appears as though you have discovered my base of operations. I cannot suffer your presence and allow you to live. Regards, Sir Digby the Goat, who is totally a boss character. Finger crossbows. <laughs> uh, I feel like that's that's going to come up often. Burns your enemies for four points of magical damage per character level, slowing their presence. Okay, pick that up. Um, Lemesai uncovers three random dungeon tiles with normal regeneration benefits. Seek nearby enemies. This is a pretty good spell. Um, 
and can actually pay for itself. However, it uh, runs the risk of kind of soaking the, the dungeon dry of its regenerative benefits early. Uh, I've often found that it, it, it sounds like a good idea, but do you, you run into late game problems. Okay, so we're fighting goblins. We're doing all right. Um, I kind of wish I could find some of these enemies a bit quicker. So is this the same spell? Uncover three random... Okay, so this is the same spell. We don't need the two of the same spell, so we can convert this. Uh, which will give us exactly 100 conversion, so that would give us a plus 10% attack rate, which is good. This guy is actually going to get an attack off, so maybe we want to try burning him. Uh, it seems to me he... Why did that not work? Oh, I see. I didn't, I didn't click it. So let's, let's try it this time. Okay, there. That works better. Swap places with an enemy adding slow debuff. No blink, retreat, or retaliation. Strike second. So that should be useful. Um, we could... Well, did, I didn't pick it up. Um, we could convert it. Extra attack rate would be nice. Sure, let's let's do that. The the fire take is is a much more aggressive playstyle, and you might want to, uh, you know, basically kill a lot of spells for the sake of. Uh, oh, okay, we, we we leveled up. That was nice. You you actually do want to factor your level ups into um, your process because it means that you're gonna you're gonna get a full uh, health bar. There's another enemy. I, I, nice that it tells you what level they are now. I'm not sure if it did that before. That's certainly uh, a nice a chunk of information it's giving you. So this would only give us 10 conversion rates. So that means it we would have to convert like 10 of these potions before we, we would like get a 10% attack bonus from it. So I'm pretty sure this would kill our death protection. And in fact, I think it, that it is going to so we don't want to do that so we're, we're going to use up some of these spells um and now we're actually going to run into some problems we should have picked that up right away actually uh so we can we what we can do is use this lemasai and that's going to reveal three tiles and give us a little bit of uh recovery um it's still going to kill us use up our death protection so we want to Make sure we survive one attack. Is that okay? Now we can now we can finally survive an attack. So, and we um, we we benefit a lot more as the fighter from attacking higher level things. So that that was worthwhile. Dungeon hint: Writer's Guild memo number one. When fighting monsters, pay attention to your and their health. Whoever runs out first dies. No red, you're dead. Okay, so this guy. How much damage does this do? Sixteen damage. Okay, so we can like hit them. And then uh, cast a spell, and that'll kill them dead. Some things will actually um, strike back if you cast a spell on them. And in fact, certain things have a huge advantage if you try and kill them with spells. Um, actually, let's let's kill that thing. We wanna we wanna kill things uh, whenever possible. This thing is level four, which is the same level as us, so that we're not actually gonna benefit from killing that thing. Um, we could start trying to, to do a bit of damage to the goat. Just like hit it, pelt it with a few spells. And in fact, we could um, use up some, some mana potions, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit some stuff and then recover uh, our health and mana. And then hopefully the goat will recover slower than us. So what is it at? It, uh, it recovered one of our spells, basically, so it probably wasn't very helpful. This is what I mean by you have to play kind of methodically. So let's just let's just follow Plan A. Plan A is just like try and level up at a at a, a you know a pace, match pace with the boss. We did level up. Probably could have done a bunch of damage to the goat first. Um, we might not have enough enemies on the board to, like, recover or enough hidden spots, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the goat a couple of times. We should be able to rewind if things go sour. I'm not sure how yet, but we'll figure it out. And remember, we have a death, um, we can use up, 
And actually, let's let's just use our mana potion. We we we're, we should be good. In fact, we will kill them. We'll use up our death protection, but after we've killed the goat, there really is nothing left for us here. Um, like that's that's the whole goal of the mission. So you can do extra stuff if you want to, but there's not much point. Casting fireballs means a free attack. Use it often, as as often as possible, even if you're a fighter. They don't hit back. Uh, we can collect gold. Gold is certainly worth picking up, because that's going to be uh, feed into the meta. The meta progression. I'm not sure um, yet how to re rewind, but that it doesn't. It really doesn't matter too much. Okay, so we got the goat horn. We're good. Deadly Kim, victorious in thousand cuts as a human fighter. Nice. Quest complete, trophy hunting. Your hero parades through the muddy streets of your rapidly growing settlement. Goathorn clasped in one mailed fist. Rose petals and jubilant shouts alike fill the air as the townsfolk come out to celebrate. Amidst the glee, a lone figure approaches you as you recline in your administrator's parade viewing chair. New throne, who dares? Hi there. I can't help but notice the sheer amount of fun that you're all having with that chunko monster skull. I happen to have a business proposal relating to that. This may, be see may seem rather forward, but I was once a renowned taxidermist in the surrounding realms, and I know a lot of very rich buyers who would love a mounted beastie head of some kind hanging over their fireplace. Bragging rights, see. Why do I care? Long story short, I'd like to buy that trophy from you. I have the gold right here. How much gold? This new kingdom needs some kind of regular income, right? Well, work with me here. We can build an entire economy around hunting and slaying evil. I'm sure, I'm pretty sure that this will turn into a long and mutually profitable relationship. Just keep the gold coming. Long story short, um, the, the horn is worth gold. It was worth 150. We knew that before that guy showed up. Now we can do uh, guild expansion. Monster trophies are valuable source of income. Uh, upgrading this structure will give you priests. Upgrading this structure will give you wizards. Upgrading this structure will give you thieves. So, um, why don't we grab some wizards? So now we have wizards. Class unlocked wizard. Complete guild expansion. This, uh, this is pretty much exactly the same as the original desktop dungeons with added 3D effects. Finger crossbows. I gotta do the finger crossbows at all times. At least I'm consistent. Um, some things are not gonna be available. This is the demo, this is uh, from Steam Next Fest. So, uh, hence why I wanted to do this. So let's try out the wizard. City expansion. A new dungeon. That's our reward. So let's try out the wizard. Human wizard. Uh, humans get a 10% attack bonus for every 100 conversion. Wizard um, can see locations of all glyphs from level start. All glyphs are small items. Magic affinity glyphs cost negative one mana and donate 10 conversion points to other conversions. Um, magic attunement starts with the burn day arrays uh, glyph, faster burning stacking. Okay, that's right. Um, this actually gives uh, burn stacks, slowing the regeneration. Right now it's going to deal four damage. Um, so they have six health, so that means we can't kill them with a fire. So we'll have to attack them first and then cast a spell on them. We'll want to pick up these attacks first. These uh, glyphs over here uh, is because we're a wizard. We're going to be able to find out about things. Boost your next melee attack with a 30% damage bonus. Strike erodes 3% resistances. Well, we're definitely going to want that. That sounds great. Summon existing summons existing enemy adding slow debuff. No blink retreat or retaliation. Strike second. This is a nice one. Um, I actually I remember really liking that spell in the original game because. It means you can you can kind of like blow through a lot of the monsters in the dungeon right away, and we'll even uh, oh we don't have enough mana to like kill them, but we don't have to because we can recover our health. We'll, we'll also pick up this. Those are increase our maximum health um, thingies, and we're gonna level up from that. Let's uh, we are using up mana whenever we use this however so that's kind of a blow but it doesn't really matter too much because we do recover mana from a revealing part of the dungeon 
So we got a dungeon. The other nice thing about summoning them is that we actually get a benefit from doing so because they strike second. In fact, we'd probably be doing a better job if I used our burn spell first because that doesn't count as actually using them. Um, like, it, it doesn't count as taking a turn. And since they are guaranteed to strike second, that means we would um, actually kill them without taking damage. Don't forget to explore sub dungeons. They show up as extra staircases and usually offer bonuses. Ooh, more dungeon. Let's continue as we are. So if we cast this spell, um, well, I don't understand why they attacked first. Maybe attacking them with a spell does count. I, I, I didn't think it did, but maybe I'm wrong. Uh, so this is the same spell, so we could convert this for 130 points that would give us more attack power and actually it gives us more than 100 so we have enough to to work towards the next one let's kill um some of the whenever possible get back to full health before fighting the next monster okay i kind of disagree i i think that uh, sometimes it's actually beneficial to orc um through many as many enemies as possible without healing so here's an, the same summon monster so we want to convert that Hey, adventure. Hey, over here. Yeah, it's me, the dungeon boss. Come on, just try and hit me with a fireball. I dare you. Haha, <laughs> you suck. That's problematic. <laughs> what happens if I hit you with a with a fireball? Well, he takes a lot of fireball. He also... Oh, I see. His magic resist 50%. Okay. Here is the same spell again, so we're going to go ahead and convert that. Um, let's summon some bosses. Or not bosses, sorry, just regular enemies. Um, wow, this is the same summon monster again, so we can convert that again. We're at um, 15 base plus 70% bonus. We're at, we're at ridiculous base damage now. We're almost one hitting level three dudes. Oh, and also just to just for the record, we are not a fighter anymore, so we don't have an uh, like a. Um, a, a, like a death recovery. So I do have to be a little bit careful. Boost your next melee attack with a 30% damage boost. Strike re erodes 30%. Re oh, so actually, it'd be a pretty good idea to use that to then um, erode the, the goat's resistance. And I don't think it comes back. So um, not not a bad idea. So we could like... You know, bum around the dungeon a little bit. And, um... The goat actually took... They, they, they took more damage than, they, than they, they're letting on. But they are recovering. So now we'll, we'll use another biceps. And hit the goat. And that is that is reducing their magic resistance. So we can hit them for some... Some fireball if we want. I don't necessarily want to be hitting the the goat right now. Like it's doesn't necessarily benefit me. But I think uh, I think wearing down the the goat's resistance is a good idea. So they're at forty one. We can we can hit them for a couple of stacks of fire. I wouldn't say I'm like p trying to play optimally, but this is the kind of game that rewards experimentation. So I, you know, I am experimenting. This would kill us. They have, uh, they still have four burning. I'm just gonna keep throwing stacks of burning on them because that will hurt them and, and possibly kill them over time. Um, we can actually hit them again. So I'll go ahead and hit them for a melee attack and then do a bit more recovery. Um. Okay, what do we want to do here? We pro Let's kill this goblin. Probably should be summoning creatures instead of... Because uh, we're at the point where we could summon creatures and kill them right away. We did level up. I, I, I wish I was... I should be paying a bit more attention to our level up because we could, we could probably do some pretty good damage to the goat before we, you know, recover all of our health. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit the goat again for another bicep hit. In fact, two of them. We're actually pretty close to, to, to killing them. So let's let's just hit them for some stacks. And in fact, we can take a mana potion and kill the goat. 
There we go. So we can leave if we want, but I'm gonna I'm gonna pick up some stuff. Um, you know, if we if we find some more gold, it's worthwhile. And apparently there is a sub dungeon in this one, so that's worth finding as well. It's gotta be somewhere around here. Maybe I guess not. Extra staircases and usually offer bonuses. Hmm. Well, where are they? Maybe they're maybe maybe they're over here. Okay. No. Okay. Huh. There's just uh there's no extra stair. Oh, there they are. I, I can't believe I missed that. Yeah, I'm not sure if I like um I'm I'm, I'm not sure if I'm a huge fan of the the 3D look of this game. It it might it's certainly going to take a little bit of getting used to. But I don't think it necessarily contributes much and the original version of desktop dungeons was so readable that it was a lot easier to, to to play casually this one it almost feels like i have to pay closer attention attention to certain things because things are, are less instantly recognizable okay well i'll get used to it most industrious kingdom administrator, a local blacksmith, unsatisfied with the extremely poor sales of farming equipment, has a business proposal to bolster the heroes in your kingdom. When you're interested, pay a visit to the supply store. Okay. You sold the goat horn for 150 gold. We don't have enough to upgrade, um, or do we? No, we do. Just barely. Okay. Upgraded a key structure and now have access to dungeon preparations. Preparations? In this building, new preparations, uh, preparation area, you'll see several slots with a variety of performance-boosting dungeon effects. Such as free items, run modifiers, or more abstract benefits. Sounds helpful. If you, were, if you want to see these preparations effect, okay, let's, let's go ahead and have a look. Preparations, sword, shield, slayer, wand. Has several preparation slots filled with stock. Adventurers may buy these items before dungeon runs. Okay, so th this is just something that, that we can do before we run into a new dungeon. We're going to do this last dungeon before I call it on this uh, Let's Try. So here are the preparations. Select an item to see more information. To start using your new dungeon preparations, you may select one preparation per row here for your adventurer's next expedition. Pick one per row. Right, okay. You'll see, you'll be charged a small amount of kingdom gold for each preparation. Your list of active preps is shown here. Okay. So, it costs actual money. Um, which is a bummer, because that's what you're using to upgrade things, right? So, say you use one of these preparations, go into a dungeon, and then lose. That means you're basically losing actual money. No, well, not actual money, but meta money. Troublesome foes destroys one regular enemy and provides base experience. So this will, you know, that's definitely nice. And it's actually, I think, the only thing we can afford. So let's, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll continue as a, we'll do a, we'll do a fighter uh, human again. Works for us. Um, oh, there seemed to be nothing there. Okay, so we got Gittendare. Grants your first strike. Grants you first strike in your next combat round and five percent dodge chance. Pick up. We're definitely picking that up. That's great for the fighter. Destroy a dungeon wall and gain a temporary twenty percent physical resistance boost. Nice. Temporary though. We'll pick it up, and then we have our burn de rays spell, which is probably good. Although I would say that since our, our um, first strike is probably going to be better than that um so we're gonna have to do one more hit now we can do our getting dare and that'll let us uh, kill them without taking any damage we've already got a bunch of level four dudes um what we could do is destroy this uh tree there this level two dude is quite tough we could use this slayer wand um, one regular enemy and provides base experience capped at player level. So if I was to do this one, okay, it would only give us one XP. It wouldn't give us like the equivalent of, uh, of a, killing a level four enemy at this point. Um, well, we have 10 
uh, mana. I'm wondering, can we... I can't believe this guy is really... He seems to he seems to be able to take all of our attacks. In fact, everyone can. We're we're not really equipped to, to, to dealing with these guys yet. So let's let's go, you know, run away a little bit. We need to we need to need to kill a few guys, and then uh, and level up. We got another burned arrays. We'll convert that. Okay, there's our level up. Nice. Okay, it's always super satisfying when we can, like, kill enemies with one hit. I've been around since the desktop dungeon's alpha, and I'm still gonna kick your ass. Just let me land one hit. Regards. That's problematic. Um, alright. We're, we're rolling around at the speed of sound. Oh! We do have places to go, and we do have to follow our rainbow. We're gonna convert that spell since we've already got it. Uh, we just barely can't kill this guy, but we can use a spell and then first strike so we kill them without taking damage. So that's good. These level 4 dudes are just a little bit too tough for us right now. Um, and I don't have enough mana to pull the same trick on that other zombie, but we can recover our, our spellage a little bit. So can okay we can kill them now so that means first strike will will mean we take no damage. This guy is going to be tougher than us, but that's good because we'll actually gain more XP from killing them. We just need a full amount of mana. Uh, if a monster is a higher level than you, it will give bonus experience. Fight them carefully using helpful equipment, and you'll rock it up in levels. Well, we're gonna do that. Um, So we don't, we just barely don't kill them, but we will survive, and then we can use a first strike on the next attack and survive that hit as well. And that'll actually level us up, which gives us full mana, and we can pretty much pull the same trick again. I'm surprised that first strike didn't work out. Okay, things are going pretty well. I'm gonna use first strike wherever possible. It seems to not be working every time. I think maybe, yeah, the goblin also has first strike, so maybe it just, their first strike supersedes our first strike. How about this guy? Oh, he's, he's pretty tough. Well, we can survive a hit. Can we first strike kill them? Yes, we can. And they're level four, so that's actually gonna level us up. Now we're pretty much killing everything. Uh, we can convert that and get some more base damage. Kill that thing. The fighter is definitely one of my favorite classes because they're like simple and uh, fun. This is a sub dungeon. We'll check this out. It's just going to be a, a little bit of extra gold, which is nice. So we're going to use first strike. Um, good to note that it's not a guaranteed win. And something that is concerning me a little bit is that we are running out of dungeon uh, and we still have to kill the the goat. So let's see if we can't um, blow a wall and find some more dungeon to discover. That's actually not doing much for us. Hmm. Well, we should be able to kill the goat. We could just um, use this thing. We haven't actually used that thing up yet. And that'll give us a level up and that's now we're at full strength basically to fight the, the goat. Um, we have a bunch of mana potions, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use all of our stuff. We should be able to take them out. And actually, if I destroy a bunch of walls, it does offer us more physical resistance. So I should be able to- yeah, okay, we, we, we're good to, to kill the goat. And exit, and we're good to go. Good to goat. You've defeated the three terrible goat lords of the surrounding dungeons and your kingdom breathes a collective sigh of relief. Unfortunately, you're running up against a new kind of problem. As you take the spoils of your hero's dungeon exploits back to the kingdom treasure vault, you notice that it's becoming a teensy bit full. It's time for the official vault to expand beyond the confines of that old couch in your spare bedroom. For now, you'll need to focus on finding a better source of cash security and hiding it in random pots across the town simply won't do. Haha, <laughs> Zelda reference. Rumors around in the local tavern that mysterious creatures known as bankers have been sighted in these realms. 
If you catch one, maybe you can harness its power in some way. Reward, a new dungeon. Trophy sold. You sold a great uh, goat horn. Now that you've got, you're going further afield, quests and dungeons are becoming accessible from the map screen. Click on the tavern. So now we get quests. This is what I mean by the game develops and becomes a bit more de uh, deep. Challenge and defeat the banker roaming here. We may be able to unlock some of its finan financiomancy. <laughs> financiomancy. Venture capital trackers are almost certain uh, that you'll find a banker wandering around here. Challenge and defeat it. So this uh, this offers us new new dungeons. Venture capital. <laughs> That's pretty good. Um, well, so I could very easily keep going, but here's what I'm gonna promise you. If you enjoyed this, um, I am going to commit to doing a series on Desktop Dungeon Rewind. It's something I've always meant to do. I actually wanted to do the original, but the fact that there's a new one coming out, um, which maybe offers a bit more accessibility, is kind of perfect for me. And, um, you know, that, that fulfills my desire for some Desktop Dungeons, and maybe it fulfills your desire for some um, borderline traditional roguelike puzzle-y tactics kind of gameplay. Um, but either way, I, I am optimistic about this new desktop dungeons. I'm a little bit reserved about some of the changes, and I actually feel like maybe not enough is different to really justify those changes, so it might honestly mean that I go back to the original. But um, I'm going to reserve judgment until I've played a bit more of the full uh, release once it comes out. But I'm really glad I got to try it here, and I'm excited to try more. And uh, regardless of what I think about it at this point, it is worthy of uh, of purchase when it when it comes out. They're, they honestly deserve, deserve my money for the amount of hours I got from the original Desktop Dungeons. It was a really excellent game. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video, definitely hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content like this, and I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.